Hi, you are listening. Listen with Irfan, my podcast channel, and we are a very special guest, Shacha, who is uh, on her uh, transit uh, from Abu Dhabi to Bhutan. Shacha lives in Bhutan. Welcome to the show, Shacha. Okay, thank you. It's nice to be here. So, Shacha, what 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 is your name? I mean, how do you spell it? Um, my full name is Shacha Wangmo, and you spell it like S H A. C H A, Shacha, then W A N G M O, Shacha Wangmo. Shacha Wangmo. Yes. What does it mean? Actually, I don't know the real meaning of Shacha, but uh, it comes from one type of Buddha. There is a, a type of Buddha called Shacha mm-hmm. Muni, Shacha Muni, and it originates from there. And then Wangmo means uh, in Bhutan, it literally means empowerment. And. Uh, how many siblings uh, you are i have five siblings and i have uh, one elder sister then an elder sister then my older bro- elder brother and a younger sister mm-hmm. including me we have five and uh, what do you study right now i am pursuing a degree bachelor's degree of pi- primary education <laughs> mm-hmm. where uh, in bhutan in which place yeah in bhutan uh, it's called paro college of education so um, your um, uh, primary schooling was done in which place my primary schooling started in my village at uh, at a district in bhutan called trashyangti and the name of the village is khamdang and i went to khamdang primary school i studied there for till class 3 and then i switched my school to another district called Tash- tashigang and i studied there from class 4 uh, to 6 at the sc- the name of the school was kurichulu primary school yeah. and in the very beginning uh, uh, these uh, uh, alphabets in bhutani mm. uh, what do you call them uh, like in uh, english you you call a b c d alphabets yeah. in bhutani what do you call it uh, we call it ka kha ga ng as the first uh, al- first four alphabets uh, it goes like ka kha ga nga cha cha ja nya ta tha da na pa pha ba ma sa sa za wa sha za a ya ha a good uh, and uh, after these uh, alphabetic uh, alphabets learning mm. uh, you form uh, words and then sentences yeah. so what were the early words uh, you uh, it was uh, we like like in hindi राम घर आ खाना खा सो हाउ डू यू जॉइन दीज वर्ड्स एंड मेक वर्ड्स एंड सेंटेंसेस ओके द फर्स्ट वर्ड्स दैट वी वर टॉट इन प्राइमरी एजुकेशन एज आई रिमेंबर इज दैट वी लर्न द नेम्स ऑफ थिंग्स लाइक फॉर टेबल वी कॉल इट टिटी टिटी एंड द चेयर इज कॉल्ड कंगी एंड टू टेल Uh, to mention a simple sentence that if we say that there is a book on the table it will be like titi gu pe dep tu something like that so uh, uh, what were the early uh, rhymes uh, you were taught uh, okay it starts with it started with the zongkha version of head and shoulder gu to cha to it goes like that uh, you just sing okay <laughs> गुतो छातो गुतो छातो पिमो दाजुमो पिमो दाजुमो मितो नम जो हापखा मितो नम जो हापखा पुमो दाजुमो पुमो दाजुमो व्हाट डज इट मीन इट मींस हेयर एंड शोल्डर हेयर एंड शोल्डर नी सेंटोस नी सेंटोस आइज एंड हियर्स नोस एंड बाउ आइज एंड हियर्स नोस एंड बाउ दिस इज so in school days mm. how much uh, your schooling is influenced with english yeah it was uh, like uh, we basically in bhutan the education system is english medium mm. so we had to learn more subjects many subjects were with english and there's only one subject with zongkha mm. zongkha medium so we um, you know English was more influencing compared to Zongkha. Hmm. Zongkha. Yeah, we the national 
language it's Zongka. Next language of Bhutan is Zongka. Yes, and mm. this written uh, thing is <laughs> Zongka. But this English thing is not uh, very terrorizing or a compulsory kind of a thing when you uh, don't speak Thonga, uh, you are being punished in your school? No, we are not being punished, but uh, we have to pass the exam. Yeah, we have to, it's, it's like compulsory that we study English. Uh, and the, the subjects taught in primary, pre-primary uh, class, it's Zongkha, English and Math. And Math is English medium. So we literally have to study two subjects, which is English medium and only one, which is Zongkha medium. So till fifth class, you uh, you study only three subjects? Three subjects till class three. Three? Yes. And, then and from four, we have English, Zongkha, Math, Science, and then Social Studies. And then afterward? Afterward, when we reach class seven, hmm. we, Social Studies is divided into two. We have English, Zongkha, Math, then, uh, what is it now? Math, Science geography and history and in your uh, school functions and cultural programs what are the main features of your uh, uh, school's cultural programs what oh. do you do there okay uh, when it comes to cultural program we have uh, main three main categories of songs hmm. one is shundra the traditional song hmm. shundra bidra it is also traditional and then riksa it is the modern modern uh, songs, hmm. modern type of song. So we have to uh, have uh, around three items, three shundras compulsory, and then four uh, to five bedas, and then rixa. You can have any number you like. Okay. So could you just uh, um, sing some traditional song uh, for me right now? Okay. The shundra one, I know one. Okay. It's a very long. It has very long tune. It was like Hmm. Yeah. We have longer mm -hmm. than this. <laughs> yeah. What is singing in this song? Uh, it's just like uh, uh, the water is falling from the cliff, hmm. like down the hill. Hmm. And, uh, it is about nature, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is fall, falling down the hill, and eri zangshula dado in the sense, uh, the and then it uh, turns, it goes to a pool which is turning to uh, in clockwise direction. Eri zangshula dado kuju ni musu nengila chanda in the sense, there is a bird nearby which has a very melodious sound as well. There, it is first part of uh, the song. And the second part of the song will be like, from right, there is uh, the Khandu Ishi Chogel. Khandu Ishi Chogel is, the, is one of the, uh, well, what do you call it now? Spouse of Guru Rinpoche. Hmm. Guru Rinpoche is like, you know, both second Buddha. Okay. He has two uh, wives. The first one is Khandu Ishi Chogel. She is coming from the right. And Khandu Menda Rawa, she is hmm. coming from the left. And Guru Rinpoche, it's coming fr from the center and it is this song is basically talking that talking the sin where these three you know uh, great lamas <laughs> buddhas are uh, reciting so you just uh, uh, presented one uh, one uh, time uh, it is the it is shundra shundra yes and then the second one it is buddha buddha it goes like okay i'll sing one Nila da pa mi cha da pa ya la cha Nila da ba chu ko ya la la sa cha 
Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, what is being sung in this song? Yeah, it means like uh, we have many knees. It means a sacred place. Sacred place. The first sacred place uh, uh, is like um, it has uh, the first sacred place is located hmm. in Chekulhasa. Hmm. Chekulhasa is in Tibet. Chekulhasa, and then, and the first uh, sacred place is at Chekulhasa. Lhasa and the Lama reside the main Lama, mm. the main god residing there is Shachamuni, the mm. Buddha Shachamuni. It's basically saying that, and then it goes on like, uh, in the second, the sacred second sac- sacred place is Pungthang Dechen. Mm. Pungthang Dechen. It's in Bhutan, uh, one of in one of the districts, Punaka. The second district, and the Lama residing there is Shabdrung. Basically, the Founder of Bhutan. Yeah, it goes on like that till around five, but I can't remember the remaining three. So the last one is the last uh, genre. Uh, it's rickshaw. So this is a contemporary, basically. Yeah, it's uh, new. Modern. Yeah, modern. And it includes uh, all uh, some popular film songs also. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. What kind of films? Uh, okay, it's like most of the films are romantic. And uh, recently, they've started the, you know, the film industry in Bhutan have started to make, uh, like, tri- uh, historical films as well. And who are the main, I mean, the pop- very popular actor and actresses? Uh, I can name like Tandin Bida, Tandin Bida, from female ac- uh, actresses Tandin Bida, Sherap Hamo, Dikil Hamo, and then. Namgi Zam, they are quite famous these days. And, and uh, apart from your uh, Bhutanese uh, actor and actresses and films, mm. what kind of um, cultural influences are from other countries, neighboring countries, kind of like India? Yeah, India <coughs> is the <laughs> India has the major influence in Bhutan because uh, pe- we watch a lot of Bollywood movies and. Uh, the mothers in Bhutan, they are <laughs> housewives, based, especially housewives, they are really into serials, Indian serials, like on CTV, Star Plus, Colors, yeah. That's why India has the major uh, influence on Bhutanese culture. And then recently, Korea and Japan has also started to have some influence in the way we live especially in younger generations because uh, the youths these days, youths in Bhutan are like, they're so concerned about the way they dress. They're so much into fashion and they like to wear Korean and Japanese products. So we are told um, Bhutan is the happiest uh, country in the world. Yeah. Is it true? Yes, I can I can say that it's How true. can I believe the I cannot justify with the statics because I'm so bad at it <laughs> mm. bad at it and uh to I can justify it with my experience. Uh-huh. What yeah. is it? Uh it's like you cannot find any person suffering from poverty in Bhutan. No one suffers. Every everyone in Bhutan are stable. They're stable on their own. Uh they have food on the table every day. Because uh, the main reason is because of the type of government that we have. We have a uh, monarchical democratic government where the king resides at the top, then the prime minister, and then become mon- ministers and then other agencies. Like, and because our, you, you might already know about our king, he's so generous and he literally walks, walks up to the, you know, inf- up to the a citizen's a house and then he's there to lend help. If the people do not have enough land, he gives free land. If the people do not have shelter over their head, he, you know, give kidus and then build houses for them. That's why people are stable and they're happy to have a king like that. And the second reason could be the pristine environment in Bhutan. Because uh, unlike other countries, uh, 
I don't say that they're not they're bad, but unlike others, we have pristine environment and we have fresh air to breathe, fresh water to drink. Even uh, if you go to the dirtiest water in Bhutan, it's drinkable, right? Because of that, and then um, majority of people in Bhutan are they're like so kind. They're ready to help anybody. If you see someone in trouble, they'll be like, "What happened? Can I can I can lend you some lend you a hand?" So all these things are experienced by you, or you are being told through various media channels and newspapers no, and no, people. No, I, I literally I can experience it. Is your mother happy? Yes. Is she not being hegemonized by your father? No. I mean, no. Huh? No, no, no. You uh, are you happy? Yes. <laughs> I mean, like I'm happy. Um, my mother and father they make decision after a discussion with them only. Same is the case with my sister and her and my brother-in-law. So basically, uh, there's no <laughs> ranking in our family. and uh, i get to do what i want and uh, they support me even if they say no at first if i do it on my own they'll be there to support me after some time just uh, look at this uh, when i was you know um, when i just received my result class 12 result uh, and i was planning to apply for colleges and i asked them if they have any suggestions and they were like you can decide on your own because it's your life and then i told them that i want to pursue a bachelor's of bachelor's degree of primary education and they were like yes you can also do that you can uh, think for some time uh, ask the people who know about that field and then decide on your own okay yeah and death is the biggest uh, fear uh, of course in everybody's life but uh, uh, when it comes to the superstitions and ghost stories kind of a thing do you believe in ghost stories yes huh? yes <laughs> oh my god it uh, you know we have uh, um our parents usually share the fictitious fiction stories or verbal stories regarding the ghost and evil spirits roaming in and around us um and they say that in bhutan there were there were uh, quite a lot of ghosts evil spirits residing in our country before and then the great lamas came and subdued all of them and turned into some kind of deities who protect bhutan and then in the uh, if we come to the present day we believe that there are souls the souls of dead people who are roaming in and around because they cannot find the way after their death they cannot find the way uh, to the hell or to the heaven so they're roaming in and around here and when they uh, if that person when they talk to us then we get sick that's why i have this pendant <laughs> to protect me from them so who uh, designate uh, the power in it no uh, we uh, the great lamas in bhutan we have quite a lot of lamas uh, starting I, i can't say starting we have like uh so sir can say in pochi but but basically but this believe in that so sir can say in pochi jekhempo jekhempo is the head of uh, religious body in bhutan and then um shabdung rimpochi is not uh alive now but uh, we ha- we have his reincarnated mm-hmm. version now Jabdur Rinpoche, Jekhem, or what do you, Namkhai Ningpo Rinpoche. We have so many lamas there, and they, you know, they, uh, you know, put some kind of power on this pendant, and we wear it. Okay. Uh, and what is your um, mm, nightmare. nightmare? Yes. Personally, I don't, I don't remember any dreams. And uh, so far, the this ghost experience is uh, uh, concerned. Yeah, I, I, I am afraid of ghosts a lot, but we say that uh, if we are not afraid of them, then they cannot do anything to us. So we have to be brave uh, in front of them. Like uh, we literally experience uh, mm, some weird noises around us. Hmm. If we travel in the jung in the j- jungles alone, then there will be like some kind of 
you know, someone is drink, sweat there and <laughs> Oh my god, no, no. Uh, we, we, I cannot say that it's an animal because it's, it literally sounded like someone is drink, uh, swell hmm. at me. In that case, what do you do to... to yeah, we chant that, uh, you know, it's quite famous there huh. and uh, everyone believes it. What is this, the chant? It's, uh, we have two uh, main, two famous chants. The uh, first one is Guru Rinpoche's chant. Uh, the second Buddha's, it's called Baza Guru. Om Ahu Baza Guru Pe Masiti Hum Ri. We we would be reciting like Om Baza Guru Pe Masiti Hum Om Baza Guru Pe Masiti Hum Baza And we believe that if we chant that, the Guru Rinpoche will be, you know, <laughs> with us on our head mm-hmm. and we'll be safe. And the other one is uh, Om Mani Pe Masiti Hum. We literally, uh, it is uh, main, mainly for, uh, mainly to guide the, help the dead souls so that they can find their way like we will be like oh, pay me, oh, pay me, oh, pay me, oh, so now uh, let us come to the health system mm. um, when the people uh, get sick um, what they prefer they prefer to go to the hospital modern medicine or to the these uh, spiritual uh, I mean like there are only few people who goes directly to the hospital it the health system is free but they don't directly go to the hospital okay. first we uh, you know, go to the shamans, lamas, and then get. Mm-hmm. We go there, and uh, if we if we can't get rid, uh, you know, get better with that, or um, with that, then they go to the hospital. Once I had a very sudden stomach ache. Stomach ache. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was so sudden that you know, I we could not believe that it's because of my health issues, and we thought that. Uh, it's because of the, some because some evil spirits uh, saw me uh, while I'm eating something, mm. and they wanted to take it, and I ate it all. That's why mm. I felt sick. Mm. So they went to a shaman, mm. and uh, you know it, it was right near us because mm. it was his one of our uncles, yeah, far relatives, mm. uncles, and uh, he they called them, they called him, and he, you know, needed uh, fire coals on fire and then some you know maize rice different kinds of Hmm. you know cereals Hmm. and then what do you call it alcohol with water Hmm. and then butter with uh, tea things and then he would you know literally put it on the fire on the heated charcoal and then he would mm, you know chant some things like it's literally like giving the evil souls food hmm. yeah feeding them and then uh, after a while I, I started feeling good, good suddenly good. Yeah. and then it never uh, came again I mean that no. kind of a even if I went to the hospital I think they wouldn't have been able to <laughs> cure okay. it <laughs> being a Buddhist I believe that yeah so now mom we have uh, left that third song, uh, the modern. We have different types of modern songs. And uh, let me sing one. Mm, it goes like this. Chudamba mujosa tumbiga Chika viga zumkarma zumbesha Namle Shall we do you have some special inclination towards singing or uh, yeah, everyone in your family sings well uh, or uh, is it me only <laughs> always feeling uh, you are singing well? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I can sing quite well but in our family my mother sings well, both my sisters sing well and I do too. My younger sister sings well. Yeah, my brother can also sing but he is not confident because he has uh, you know Sorry. high pitch high pitch mm-hmm. yeah higher pitch because uh, in Bhutan 
uh, people believe that the voice, voice's voice, hmm. a boy's voice should be, you know, deep. Yeah, deep. <laughs> my, I, I've never heard my fr- father sing though. He doesn't <laughs> sing. <laughs> what your uh, father do? Uh, he's a farmer, but uh, he earns money through carpentry work. And in farming, what? Yeah, we cultivate maize, rice, then wheat, buckwheat. We cultivate every bits and pieces of, you know, vegetables also. And but we also we sell only s- around thirty percent of it. Actually, farmers are far better than <laughs> some farmers are far better than the ones who are employed in Bhutan. Mm-hmm. So. Thank you, Shacha, uh, for talking so uh, so long and uh, singing so beautiful songs. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs>